Okay, so now we've got a new recording. So let's see what's going on with this. So we've got testing.java. And there seems to be a problem with this. Seems to be a problem with this Mac OS. No. Mac goes string int int string. Mac goes string int int string. And so that's weird because that looks right. Mac first. Then we've got print first to string. I mean, oh, there's an error on P. What's the error on P? Let's see. There's an error on P. This computer looks good. Mac. Public string OS. OS equals OS name. Set OS name. Um, public class testing. Mac. First two string. I mean, what what is missing? I don't see what's wrong. System that out. Oh, because there's no main method. Oh, how, I mean, you gotta put public static void main. You can't just run it inside of um, the class because behaviors have to be inside of a method. So. That, that was a good lesson, and it was actually kind of hard to debug. So behaviors have to be in a method. And, you know, like, if somebody shares this and we figure that out, right? Like, that, that took me a little while of looking at it because I was just assuming, okay, this is in a method. But then when I look back, it's not in a method. I was so focused on, is everything right here on the inheritance part? So I think I think there's a valuable lesson there. All right, so it runs and it runs and perfect. So this is a really good example. I like this a lot because we've got the processor year, the RAM amount, the string brand. Now, what specifically about the Mac was added? Well, we've got the operating system. Um, let's think of some other like Mac only things. What's something only a Mac has? What do you think? What's something only a Mac has that that would make it a reason to give it its own class? Well, that's true, the Mac OS. Okay, an iCloud subscription. Oh, the command key. Yeah, that, that's true. Only the Mac has the command key. So um, the UI is, is unique. I, I don't know. We can add the iCloud as well. We could say public Boolean uh, has iCloud subscription. And then inside here, we can you know, work with the iCloud subscription for this Mac. I just made it public to make it quicker. But we could say first dot has iCloud subscription equals true. Oh, that's pretty cool. They've got the they've got the ARM processor. I only read it. Do people actually say ARM or do they just call it ARM? Because I, I only read it. So that's something I don't know. ARM, cool. That's that's what I call it. So we can add the iCloud subscription. We could say, yes, that's true. They have an iCloud subscription. But we can add a whole bunch of specific things to the Mac that generic computers don't have, right? And, and that's like the type of thing that you're, you're, you're bringing up about the ARM processor. That's great. So what you add in is your discretion. Like some people wrote me messages. I don't know what to put in. There's really no wrong answer. I mean, as long as you're on target, you're talking about things that are relevant, 
like if you bring up something totally random then people could say no that's why would you put that in that, that doesn't make logical sense but as long as you're like logically in the ballpark that's good so there we have um the link and let's share thoughts on this ah ronald's typing Well, share a thought anyways. All right, let's see. I was going to say Mac is very different, but in a way more effective to do programming. Okay, that's that's a valid opinion. Uh, but not to learn it mostly when you already know how to code. I, I know that that Macs are really popular among programmers. Um, I certainly I feel like I'm in the the um, minority like of programmers because no i don't know if i'm the minority but i don't know what the percentage would be but anyways i use a windows computer um but a lot of programmers like macs but it yeah of course if you just buy a mac um doesn't make you a programmer macs are great for most creators it's just the standard i i would say for for graphics i think and music, music, Macs dominate music. Pixar actually uses only Macs. It has a lot of integrated software. It's cleaner, cleaner and easier. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that they do the hardware and the software is really powerful. I mean, I've always had a lot of respect for... I have a Mac in my office at Miami-Dade. And it's not like I don't know how to use it. But I think I still know more tricks around Windows. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, for gaming... Gaming is still probably dominated by Windows, but um, yeah, gaming is PC. But for, for creators, I think Mac is, is still probably the way to go. And um, I guess if, you're, if you do both, you gotta have two, two high-end computers. Linux is a mixed bag. It depends on the distro you ultimately decide on. I mean, I I think everybody who is interested in this plays with Linux at some point. And um, Linux on the desktop can be tricky. Linux on the desktop can be tricky. Even, even in 2021, because the drivers, drivers can still be a pain. But, well, you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot, especially, um, 
like just exploring the command line. Of course, you have a command line on Mac and you have command line on, on Windows, but um, yeah, Ubuntu is a good start. You know what you could do is you could you could ins you could just go to VirtualBox. Actually, Oracle controls Java. VirtualBox is a powerful x86 and AMD 64, Intel 64 virtualization product for enterprise as well as home use. Who has used this before? Has anybody used VirtualBox before? Okay, some people have, that's great. Yeah, it, it's just virtualization software. It's so you can run, like you have Windows, but then you're running on top of it Linux or whatever, right, vice versa. So it, it's kind of neat. You might want to give it a try, and I, I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll learn a lot doing it. And there you go. So I think, I think you'll probably want to check this sort of thing out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about virtual machines. But Docker, <clears throat> Docker is really big too. So run Java in Docker. So we can go to Docker here. It says build your Java image. Before we start building images, ensure you have enabled BuildKit on your machine. BuildKit allows you to build Docker images efficiently. Honestly, the whole part of following these sort of tutorials is just going step by step. They're going to tell you, okay, put this in, then add this to your JSON file, then download and install Java, then go through your directories, right? So having some familiarity with the command line is really, really important, okay? And this, this, is, this is key to getting to be a competent computer user, whether you want to be a programmer or whether you want to be an IT specialist, but knowing some command line is really important. Like somebody mentioned Docker, we went to this, this documentation Right, the Docker docs. We're looking at Java with Docker, and Docker's a container. And the first thing we see here, well, one of the first things we see is CD. Then we see Git. So we're going to talk about Git during this class. And let's see, Ronald types, I wanted to, since I watched a lot of videos, like a lot from this guy with a huge beard, and made it seem fun. I think he does a great job at teaching, but I guess I never did it. Probably too lazy at the time I was watching him. Well, <laughs> I think that, that it's it's definitely like good to jump in and try these things out for sure. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be beneficial for years and years to come. So looking at this tutorial makes me think about your final project. Your final project is gonna be something that you care about. And and using Java with Docker could be it, right? Like you could say, I want to go through this tutorial. I want to run some Java code in a Docker container. And the point is you look up the documentation, you follow the steps. If they say use IntelliJ, use IntelliJ. And as you follow them, they're going to guide you through what it takes to actually run your code on their, on their like uh, creation which is Docker. And in the end, you're going to make a video. You're going to show us during class time, look, this is what I did. And there is a lot of using tutorials. Like when somebody shows that they got code running on Docker, nobody thinks, oh, they did it all from their head. No, they followed instructions and they now can explain the instructions because they did the instructions, right? So, 
this this is the type of thing that that I feel is the point of the class. The point of the class is can you read a tutorial and confidently go through the steps on the tutorial and not be afraid of the Java, not be afraid of a little bit of the command line. So I think I think this has been a really instructive like path we've taken today, you know. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and close Docker. Uh, nobody else has any questions on this, so let's close this. Let's close the inheritance link. We'll go back to Memer in a second. And we are talking about inheritance, so we can close the syllabus. We can close these videos. And we're back to these, this presentation. So now we've got add interest. So add interest is a method, and it's going to just get the balance, multiply the interest rate, divide it by 100, and then deposit the interest. Every day you get interest, the interest is deposited again. And talking about finance, that's why, honestly, if somebody wins the lottery and, and they get a lump sum of $10 million, if they just purchase bonds, uh, even though bonds pay so little, um, they probably pay enough to have a decent, a decent life, right? Like if you buy some corporate bonds that pay 2%, well, let's, let's go to Wolfram Alpha, 2% of 10 million. Okay. Wolfram Alpha can understand things like this. 2% of 10 million is 200,000. 200,000 is a great income, right? Like most people don't make 200,000 in, in technology world. They can make 200,000 without too much difficulty, but interest is very powerful, right? So every day you get the money put in, you get the money put in, you get the money put in. So you can, you can just live without even going into your, into your capital. This is how you would write the code to keep track of that. Now, what are the instance fields? that savings account has. Savings account had balance and interest rate. What are the four methods that you can use with the savings account? Well, you can deposit, you can withdraw, take money out, you can get the balance, and you can add the interest, which is what we were just talking about, how your money works for you. So if class manager extends the class employee, which class is the superclass? Which is the subclass? Well, manager is the subclass. Employee is the superclass. So we can look at different creatures through history. So we have these archosaurs, and then dinosaurs are a type of archosaur. And then within dinosaurs, you have, um, I'm not going to even be, I'm not going to even be able to pronounce this, but ornithischians. And this is the hierarchy of ancient reptiles. So if you are modeling these creatures, you could have this class, this class extends this class, this class extends this class. All right. Now, we are going to cover swing in this class, like in this course. In this course, we're going to talk about how you can add images to your, to your panels, how you can add labels, how you can add checkboxes, radio buttons. And the way that it, the swing was designed is according to a hierarchy. All right. And then again, thinking about bank accounts, we can skip that because of time. J text component is something from swing. And okay. So this is a good, a good one to stop for th these particular slides. Inheriting methods. You can do some things. One thing is you can override a method. This is where you supply a different implementation of a method that exists in the superclass. But it must have the same signature, the same name, and the same parameter type. So if the method is applied to an object of the subclass type, the overriding method is executed. Now, when you inherit a method, you don't have a new implementation. You just use the same behavior that was set up before. The superclass method can be applied to the subclass objects. Okay, 
When you add a method, you give a new method. You supply a new method that doesn't exist in the superclass. So like somebody said, um, there's a command key for a Mac. So you could add a method, press command key, that only happens when you're, when you're working with a Mac subclass, right? The new method can only be applied to subclass objects. All right, so very good. Now let's go ahead and let's go back to Java and let's open up, let's open up our interface slides and we can get started with these. Okay, so we can say interface slides. And then we just click here on interface slides. All right. <clears throat> so we'll just start covering interfaces a little. There's going to be no new homework on Memer today. Um, there is a new code review. All right. And um, I'm really, really happy that so many students did the assignment. Just looking at the numbers, like the, the two assignments that were on Memer. Um, lots of good messages from students, as I mentioned before. Um, so it's nice that you, you always have the lines of communication open through Discord. Um, I did get an email as I was just starting up that said, oh, a student in your um, in-person class just told the college that they have um, COVID. And I said, oh, great. So it's like there's definite benefits to the way we're doing this class virtually, where there's no expectation that you go in person. Um, I'm glad that we're in person still because it's nice to have in-person communication and stuff. Um, so I don't think anybody should still be a hermit. Like, I don't, I don't care that a student was in the class with COVID. I'd rather if they weren't in the class with COVID, of course, but it's not like I read the email and I'm now like, you know, terrified. It's just, it's what happens. But COVID numbers are getting better. I'm just saying, if you did make the decision to stay home, like, because, like if COVID was one of the reasons, just know that like you did dodge sitting next to people with COVID because you know that I did get the email today. Hopefully this is going to disappear and then I don't know if it's ever going to disappear, but it's going to be less and less. And then, you know, we'll get less emails about people with COVID and this and that. So um, I, I like the way this class is going. That's the point. Okay, so let's continue. So interfaces. We're going to talk about how classes and interface references work, understand the concept of polymorphism, see how interfaces can be used to decouple classes. We'll start to get a little bit into inner classes and then more about scope and then continue learning about graphical applications. So before we just saw some, some hierarchy charts for swing, this is all leading up to some swing examples that we have that I think are going to usually students like a lot. So interface types make code more reusable, right? So you can have a data set to find the average and maximum of a set of values. But what if you want to find the average and maximum of a set of bank account values? Well, you've got a data set and then you're going to add a bank account. You want to get the balance, and then you want to return the maximum bank account. Well, and then what if you have coins? What if you want to get the value and find the maximum of the coins? You see how you're doing the same behavior over and over again? Interfaces are used for code reuse. The, the mechanics of analyzing the data are the same in all the cases. It's the details of measurement that differ. So classes could agree on a method get measure. 
that obtains the measure to be used in the analysis. So coins get measured. Bank accounts get measured. So we can implement a single reusable data set class whose add method looks like this. Sum equals sum plus x dot get measure. If count is zero or maximum dot get measure is less than x dot get measure, the maximum is now x and you increment the count by one. So what is the type of variable x? x is any class that has a get measure method. So this is what we define. We define an interface called measurable. Before, about an hour ago, we saw that WASPs are going to implement Stinger, where we talk about all the things that, that have to do with stinging. This has to do with measuring. So with measuring, we say get measure. The interface declaration lists all the methods and their signatures that the interface type requires. So how is an interface similar to a class and how is it different? An interface type is similar to a class, but there are several important differences. All methods in an interface type are abstract. They don't have an implementation. All methods in an interface type are automatically public. And an interface type does not have instance fields. So we can just go here and look up Java interface. And we see that Oracle does have a nice set of tutorials for interfaces. What is an interface? Well, they love to use the bicycle example on, on their, their documentation. So they're saying, if you're going to say that your vehicle is a bicycle, it's got to be able to change the cadence. It's got to be able to change the gear. It's got to be able to speed up and it's got to be able to apply brakes. These are all things that bicycles must do. Just like when we were talking about coins and bank accounts, you all, you want to know what's the most valuable coin. What's the most valuable bank account. It's all about measuring them. With bicycles, it's all about going somewhere. So depending on the problem that you're working with, you have to think about the behaviors that are specific to that problem. That's the whole point, keeping them logically grouped together. It's like this is a contract. You can't have a bicycle if you don't have brakes because what, what are you gonna do for stopping? Run into the wall, put your feet down? That's, that's not gonna work. Okay. So continuing on, you've got this data set. Now you can send in measurable objects, right? Measurable objects, whether it's bank account or coin, and you can call get measure and maximum. So the syntax is public class bank account implements measurable. And then we've got public double get measure. A class can implement more than one interface type, but the class must define all the methods that are required by all the interfaces it implements. So let's kind of circle back to ArrayLists. Let's go back to that ArrayList API, Java ArrayList API. So here we see class ArrayList. And notice what it says here. Public class array list implements list, random access, clonable, and serializable. That means there are methods inside list, random access, clonable, and serializable that all had to be dealt with by array list. So what's inside list? Let's click on list. Well, inside list, we see this is an interface, right? List is an interface. List is an interface. That means there's a list of, a list inside list of methods that have to be dealt with. And if we scroll down, we can see all of them. Add, we saw add before when we made our um, array list of the insects where we were adding the insect and adding the wasp because a wasp is an insect. We've got add all, we've got clear, we've got contains. Specifically, how these are implemented 
is done inside the ArrayList class. Okay, so the list provides, the interface list provides all the methods that mu must be dealt with. And then inside ArrayList, we see how they're dealt with. So just think of it like a contract. Think of the interface as a contract. So what is a contract? Let's just end with that little discussion. Somebody put a definition of a contract. Oh, legal binding. That sounds real good. I like that. Legal binding. Okay. So that's excellent. That gets a thumbs up. All right, the nice thing is um, the video finished processing. And if people want, like to watch these videos, I don't mind making copies of the videos because it, it's like two clicks. It's not a hard thing to make the videos. So if you want to rewatch these videos, you can. There's the link to today's class. And I'll send a message to the student who was absent today. Let's see. Let's see if I can find the student. All right, there we go. All right, so any last questions or comments? Oh, let me take attendance real quick before you leave. I like to take attendance, even though I now have the recording, it's just easier if we do it right now. Okay, so screenshot, 927 attendance, Java. Gabriel. Three questions, okay. Which PC is best for programming? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know that. The test, we'll just go with the test that's listed here on the syllabus. So if we go here to the syllabus, we can see it's, it says test two, but we'll just make that test one because the first one, they were so slow in getting back to me. I couldn't, I couldn't make it at that time, but I'm okay with this. October 25th to October 25th is the test. Now let's see what question three is. And it says for the projects of letter and the M and MPG, the cases need to be green in order to pass. Um, yes, you get points. You get points by passing the test cases. So if you click on the test cases, you can see what you got right or wrong. So if you go here to Memer, and then if we click on MPG, and we say Sandbox, 
and then we say, and if somebody has to go to another class, of course, they can just, like, attendance is taken. And then we go here to open in Meme or IDE, right? So Meme or IDE is fine. It's just like Replit. And then you just go here to fall 2021 miles per gallon. So let's just say we just print in here system.out.printline, um, I don't know, five, right? And then we save it, control S, and then we submit it by just going over here to submit or submit.